All right, here we're going to change the oil on this uh, 2011 Toyota Camry. Okay, here is a lifting point. That's basically the cross member here. So, what I did is I jacked the car up and I put it on stands. I also took this tire off, but you don't have to. The reason why I took the tire off so it makes it a little easier for me to film it so you can see in there. That's all. So you don't have to take the tire off at all. Now, if you don't use this hydraulic jack like this, you can use the, the jack from the car, but make sure you put jack stands under it because it's not very safe. Okay, here is the dipstick for the oil. See, it's in between the two, so it's down a but we'll straighten that out. Now, the old style is, uh, they used to have them down here in the front and you just clamped around and, hang on, wait. So the old style, this is from Chevrolet, but it just fit down in there and this went over the top, you hooked around and you just took this off. And then it just had a, a seal here but with the new ones I think they started in 2011 maybe 2010 they now use this type of thing but this is a canister tool and that goes up in the canister now I went to my local auto parts store they have plastic ones they told me to go to Toyota and buy one of these metal ones because they're better and if you ever break it, I don't know how you're going to get that filter out again, you know. So that's why I went. I think these were like 35 bucks or something like that at uh, Toyota. But I think it's well worth it. Okay, so now let's go down and uh, take the filter out and we'll put the, the new filter in. Okay. Now that we're underneath the car, got the oil can. Here is the canister, and here is the tool. Okay. Uh, I will, sh once I take this off, I will show you how it fits, because you just can't see where you're coming from there. Okay, just a simple 3 8 drive. Okay, we broke this loose. Bring the oil can down here. Okay, so we just have a little oil. And here is the, the filter right in here. I'm going to go back up and I'm going to clean this off and I'm going to show you how all this fits. In the meantime, just let this drip down a little bit. Here's where it went. Right in here, just screws right in. So, I'm just going to clean this out a little bit. Wipe it all nice, down nice and clean. And we'll leave, leave that alone. Now that that's all done dripping oil, we'll come over here to the oil pan itself. This is a number 14. If somebody didn't tighten this up too bad, I'll be able to get it off. Okay, once you break this loose, it comes off pretty easy. Have your pan ready. And there you go. Now we'll just wait for that to, uh, to drain out. In the meantime, we can go work on our filter. Okay, now that I took the uh, drain plug out, I use this uh, blue RTV stuff. I know everybody, some people say you don't need it, whatever, but I just put a little dab right there on the washer so it just seals it up just a little bit and that'll be fine. So, that's one part. 
So here is the tool itself. Now here, you, you notice that it's got three grooves and that's how it fits so that you know you just take this off screw this off now here's the other item and I have made this mistake myself and if you put the, the oil ring in the wrong place after about a hundred miles it's going to squirt out on you what happens is it belongs in this groove right here not on the end everybody puts it here and makes that mistake it belongs here see so putting it in the wrong spot that is the problem okay so here's the replacement filter Here's a little tool that they give you. You can take this off and put it in here and drain some of that oil. I don't do that. And here is the filter itself. It just goes right in here. A little spring loaded. Okay. Now the real thing here is the O-ring. Okay, so what I do, I just put a little oil on it. Be careful because you don't want to stretch this. Okay, just want to put a little oil on it. And then just gently put it on here. Okay, and remember, once again, it goes in this groove here. It does not go to the bottom. Okay, so there it is. Oh, uh, put in there. I put a little oil on here. Then I can put this in here. Next thing you know, I just put this back. Three over here, one over here. And I can just stick it right up in the car and tighten it up, and we're good to go. It also came with this other O-ring. The other O-ring is in case you want to take this off and drain the oil first. But like I say, there's hardly any oil in here. So, um, I, don't, I don't really bother. Okay, so, what I want to do now, clean that up later on. Um, got it in position, I'm going to stick it up there and tighten it up. Okay, so here it is. All I'm going to do is just stick it right up in here and tighten it up. I use my 3H drive. Okay, there it is. I'm not going to super tighten it because I'm going to want to try to get it off some other day. All right, now the next thing is the water, the oil is almost all drained out over here. So, Remember we put that little bit of bluing on the uh, plug. So we'll just stick that right in there. And tighten it up. Okay, so that's all it takes on the bottom. So let's just go back up to the top now. Here's where you add the oil. And I have a little funnel here to make it a little easier for myself. I happen to be using 5W30, and I'm using regular, not synthetic. So I sure well, I'll probably get a thousand comments, but uh, what I do is I change my oil every 5,000 miles. Uh, I guess recommended for Toyota is 10,000, which is synthetic, but I don't know. I just like this better. And there's a lot of sites on uh, YouTube that explain the difference between the two of them and why people use one over the other.
we put two quarts in there already and I can't remember how much it is so I'm gonna look at the owner's manual and it tells me here on on page 489 it talks about uh, oil capacity drain and refill with filter so we have a small little four-cylinder engine it takes 4.7 quarts so let me just finish putting it all in and then what we're going to do is uh, start the car let it run and we'll look underneath see if it leaks and if it doesn't leak what I do is I always put a little tag here tell me when I just changed the oil or you can write it in your manual and that way you'll know for sure now that we put all the oil in make sure you put the cap on okay we'll check just for the fun of it okay it's all the way up there so now let's start the car and see what it looks like. Okay, it looks like uh, there's no oil coming from underneath the car. We let it run for about a minute and then we'll uh, shut it off and we will check the dipstick after it all settles down. Uh, here's a dipstick. It says full. So, and we have the cap on. We checked it, we ran it, so there's no leaks underneath. So we're good to go. Okay, I have a habit of putting a piece of masking tape either here or sometimes I'll run around a hose and this is 1227.16 and it is 75,000 miles with this oil change. To reset the maintenance light change the trip meter to A so there it is you can see that goes to A and it's just done by hitting this button if you hit it next it goes to B then it comes back to regular and then it comes back to A while pressing this the trip meter reset button turn this engine start to off position then switch it back on And now you'll see that the maintenance light that was over here went off. So that's a pretty simple procedure. And if you have a, uh, a Toyota manual, it will t tell you how to do that. That's it.